Well, good morning. Isn't that an interesting video? I tell you, perspective is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And uh, boy, did the kids do a good job? And Beth and Linda, thank you so much. They do that in their Wednesday night. And uh, they have their own uh, praise and worship thing. And what you didn't see here, I'll go in there and the kids will raise their hand. And, and I saw uh, one that tears were coming down a little girl's eyes when she was uh, praising the Lord. And so thank you, parents, for bringing your kids on Wednesdays and Sundays. And God is doing a great thing in there. Well, today we're talking about being thankful, living a life of gratitude. And again, that perspective that was shown in that video uh, is so interesting. Here, a guy, he focused on what he didn't have. He didn't have shoes, but yet, look at, he had the strength of his legs and he had health to run and to move. And so a lot of times, how many of you know, we take for granted all that we have. How many of you know that? All right, just check it. <laughs> and so a lot of times, it makes you wonder what would happen if we gave thanks for everything we had and worry a lot less on what we don't have. And so I want to, uh, we should all move from a maybe a, a day of Thanksgiving or a week of Thanksgiving to live a life of Thanksgiving before the Lord. Look at the very first verse on your outline or on the screen this morning. It's found in Colossians 2, 7, and it says this. Having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. See, he's saying there, basically, for all that God has done for us, for the faith that we have and all that God has done, that we should be overflowing with gratitude. All of us should be overflowing with gratitude. And so I'm absolutely convinced that if we put this scripture into our lives and into our hearts, it will change us. It will impact your life. Anyone can have a life of overflowing with gratitude, no matter what the circumstances might, might be. And why is that important? Because the Bible tells us that when it comes to gratitude, it is really God's will for our life that we should live a grateful life and have a grateful attitude uh, before the Lord. I believe we are the most blessed nation. I believe we are the, the biggest nation of complainers as well. And a lot of times we have so much, but yet we focus on what we don't have. Look what it says in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 18 here. It says... Um, it is, let me see, in everything, say with me, in, in everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So it says, listen, in everything, give thanks, not for everything, give thanks, right? Because there's some things that, that uh, are not good. And so it, it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances, and there's a big difference. You don't have to give thanks for bad in your life. Uh, you don't have to be thankful for evil that happens in the world. And so we're not thankful for that. But in everything, we become thankful because we have the Lord and all that is in, uh, given to us in that. So most of the things that happen in this world are not God's will. That's what we pray, Lord. Uh, may your will be done um, on earth as it is in heaven. How is it done in heaven? God's will is like that. How is God's will done on earth? Hard. <laughs> and so we can see that. We're not in the land of the living, going to the land of the dying. We're in the land of the dying, going to the land of the living. Amen? And so a lot of times we get that kind of confused. And I'm not surprised when people are grateful when things are going good. But it is so awesome to see when things are difficult, when things are, are uh, a struggle, that people's attitudes are still grateful for everything that they have. Listen, everyone desires to be in the perfect will of God. But here's what happens. We might not look like what you think it should be. 
So God's will, we have a perception of what we think God's will should be. But even in the difficult times, it is God's will because God is working something in our lives. How I many of you know that to be true? That a lot of times we have the most growth, we learn the most when we're in the midst of struggles, not necessarily when things are going good. And if things were good all the time, it, it's true, we would like it, but we would live a boring life. And then I think we wouldn't be grateful for a lot of things when things are good. Amen? And so even biblical times reminds us of goodness uh, in our lives. I was talking with Pastor Ken this week, and you know that feeling that you get when you have Thanksgiving dinner? And it's like, boy, can't you smell that turkey and gravy? And I love mashed potatoes and stuffing. And boy, you, you eat that and you're full, right? And I go, you know what? That was so good. I think I'm just going to have just a little bit more stuffing, a little bit more mashed potatoes and gravy. And then it's like, you're so full, you're going to burst. And then somebody brings you a big slice of apple pie. <laughs> and it's like, you're so full, you're so miserable. It's so wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> and Pastor Ken said, Pastor Brian, it's just like that. We should be like that because really, thankfulness comes from the inside, doesn't it? It's those things of gratitude that, that we're so great with our perspective that God is so good. We have the hope of heaven. We have God's mercy and grace. We have salvation. We can be at a funeral. We were at Gail's funeral, which is Terry's wife and, and uh, Beth's mom, and we were there at the funeral, and, and I tell you, it is so wonderful to be there with the hope of heaven. And so we have so much to be thankful for, and our thankfulness, listen, should overflow in our lives. We should be so full that it overflows in our lives. And so we are thankful. We are full. We should be full every day of being thankful for what God has for us. And so I want to talk about three action steps this morning on having um, principles for a life of thanksgiving. The first one, if you write this down, make thankfulness an attitude. Make thankfulness an attitude. There's a couple people, when I think of thankfulness, just a couple people come to my mind. They thank the Lord all the time. Uh, and every time I see them, they're just so grateful and so thankful. No matter what is going on, they just stop and they just thank and praise the Lord. How many of you know we all experience changing circumstances from time to time? And sometimes it leads to pain and suffering. And some of our pain and suffering may never go away, but your attitude can change. And thankfulness is that attitude. Look what it says in Psalm 92, 1 and 2. It says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Gratitude is nothing less, I believe, than the key to happiness. I tell you, I know people, they complain and they complain and they complain and they complain about everything. And guess what? They're miserable people. And the happiest people I know, this is true. A great observation, those people who are grateful and thankful for all that God has given to them, I tell you, they have joy and they have happiness in their life. And so it's... It's an important thing to have that spirit of gratitude. A lot of times, we're not grateful until we're in the midst of losing something. And then all of a sudden, we become grateful to the Lord, right? And we press into the Lord. And it's so important. A thankful attitude rises above any circumstance. And even in your circumstance, even if your circumstance doesn't change, your perspective and your attitude can change. I, I love this verse about every Thanksgiving. I, I bring it out. It's uh, Habakkuk uh, 3, 17 and 18. And I love this. It says, though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail and the fields produce no food, 
though the flock should be cut off from the fold and there is no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Listen, I tell you, there's an expiration date on every trial. That's why you praise the Lord, because the end's coming. The Lord works out all things for your good. For those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose, if it's not good, you're not done yet, because it's going to be good. So you praise the Lord out of faith of his promises in all goodness, and it comes out. So he says, even though I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this, and I don't have this, he goes, even though I will praise the Lord, I will exalt the Lord. And so that's the way we should be because things can change. Circumstances change from day to day, sometimes minute to minute. But how many of you know the faithfulness of the Lord never changes? The goodness of the Lord is always there for all of us. And then number two, write this down. Take stock of why you're thankful. Take stock why you are thankful. When I say take stock, it's, it's like taking inventory. Do you know a lot of times we, we're so busy in life, we just don't stop and take time to be thankful. Usually, you know when we do it? Around Thanksgiving time. <laughs> and folks, that's far too little time to stop and to give thanks. Listen, we should give thanks every single day. You should stop and give thanks. Take stock of why you are thankful. Make a list. In fact, there's a thing I call thank therapy. <laughs> I was almost going to name this sermon thank therapy. And Pastor Ken and Christina says, please don't. <laughs> thank pull is much better. But in thank therapy, when I make a list for everything that I'm thankful and grateful to, and I recommend you do this once a week. It will change your life because what it does, listen, it changes your perspective. Because in our natural, we are so drifting to a place of what we don't have. And when we get full of all that we do have, listen, when we're thankful for what we have, listen, God gives you more. And for those who are not thankful for what they have, I don't believe God gives them anymore. And in a very practical way, when, when I give something to the kids at home, and they're not grateful, they're not thankful, and they don't say thank you, you know what happens? That's right. You must be at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, wait, wait a minute, let, let me get that. They go, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, what'd you say? Oh, thank you. It should be the very first thing out of our mouth. And you know what? When kids are grateful, how many of you know we want to keep blessing them? When they're truly grateful. And it's the same thing with us. When we're grateful and we're thankful, man, God, I think he wants to keep blessing and keep blessing and keep blessing. And I learned that a long time ago. For whatever I had over here, I couldn't go to the next level until I was thankful for the little I had. And then I go here, and sometimes I get a little bit discontent with what I have, and I have to stop, and I say, no, I'm not discontented. Lord, I am thankful. And you know what happens? Then God keeps blessing me, and he keeps blessing me, and he keeps blessing me, and I'm blessed. You know why? Because God blesses me. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God for all that he does for us. Folks, even the stuff that comes inside. Oh, holy stuff. Joy, peace, the hope of heaven, and all the things we take for granted. Oh, God is so great. Listen, the Lord wants to bless you, but he's not going to bless people who are not grateful, nor should he. But when we're all grateful, the Lord wants to bless you. But listen, it's a matter of the heart. It is the matter of the heart. Don't look for what you don't have. Don't look for what is absent. Look for what is present. And you'll see the Lord move in every area in life. Do that once a week. It'll change your life. Hmm. Listen, one of the biggest miracles 
that I used to remember as a kid was when Jesus fed the 5,000. And really in the text, it was about 5,000 men, so there was probably women and children there, so it could be about 15,000. But what he did is he took this little boy's lunch. And this little boy, he had five loaves and he had two fish. And you know what it says? It says Jesus took this little lunch. And Jesus took it, it says, and he gave what? Thanks. He gave thanks for this little lunch. And in that lunch was a blessing of the Lord that met the needs of so much. He takes what the little boy has, lifts it to heaven, gives thanks. He divides it, and it supplied all the needs for 5,000 plus people. See, the Lord, whatever you have, I'm just saying, because I've seen it. I've always had like a little, and the little that I had that I lifted up to the Lord and I say, Lord, thank you for it. You know what the Lord does? He multiplies. The Lord has the ability to multiply what you give. Do you know that? See, a lot of times we want to keep for ourselves. That's why he says, hey, be faithful, give. How many of you know that God can do more with your 90% than you can do with 100%? Because, see, you're trusting God. You're thanking God. Oh, God, I love you so much. Oh, God, I'm thankful so much. It's called thanks giving. Thanks giving. When we're thankful, how many of you know we give? Yeah. And so that's the outflow of being thankful. When God blesses someone, he does it by taking what they naturally have and he multiplies it to make it sufficient for all of their needs. That's God's blessing. God blesses someone by taking what he can, what they have naturally, and he multiplies it and he makes it sufficient to supply all of our needs. Look what it says here in Romans 121. Very interesting verse. It says this. Even though they knew God. How many of you know God? Most of you. Even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. That means that they knew about the Lord, but they wouldn't admit it. They wouldn't worship him. They wouldn't give him thanks for all that he did for their, for their daily care, for the daily provision. And after a while, they began to think up silly ideas about who God was and what God wanted them to do. And it says that, that their heart became dark and they became kind of confused. See, thankfulness to the Lord aligns us where we need to be. It shows us that we know where all of our blessings come from. I tell you, I, I took little Anna. Anna was eight years old, and I took her to McDonald's last week. And she had that chicken McNuggets and French fries. How many of you know the smell of French fries? You just have to, you know, take a French fry, right? And so... I reach in her bag to grab a french fry. And you know what she says? Hey, you can't have that. Those are mine. <laughs> and I think to myself, I just bought those french fries. <laughs> I bought those chicken egg nuggets. And you say they're mine. Huh, isn't that the way a kid thinks? And I'm thinking, I can buy her all the french fries I want. I could buy my own French fries, right? But I want her to freely give me a French fry because who supplied the milk? Right. Listen, in the same way, who buys all your French fries? Right. The Lord does. Right. And when you go, oh, the Lord says, oh, why don't you give this? And we go, oh, no, Lord, that's mine. Yeah. And the Lord's thinking, I don't need your money. I have all the money I, I need. I have all the riches. I own a cattle on a thousand mules. But what I do is I want your heart. And so in that same way, we need to have that attitude of thanksgiving. We need to take 
God that all our blessings, listen, every good gift comes from one place, from above. And we need to acknowledge that in all of our ways. And then number three, make God the source of your thankfulness. Make God the source of your thankfulness. Look what it says in Hebrews 12, 28. It says we should be, say it with me, grateful that we were given a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And in this kingdom, we please God by worshiping him and showing him great honor and respect. Wow. So listen, in God's economy, in God's kingdom, there's something that he values highly. And that's worshiping him. That's respecting him and honoring him. Do we respect and honor the Lord? Do we keep this day holy and say, you know what? It's the first day of the week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this time right here and I'm going to give it to the Lord. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to give him the first fruits of all that I have. I'm going to give him the first uh, day of the week and I'm going to come and honor and respect him. It's what his kingdom is all about. We should be grateful that we are given the kingdom that cannot be shaken. And in this kingdom, again, we please God by worshiping him, showing him great honor and respect. And the bottom line is this. When it all comes crumbling down, Jesus is the only one that's left standing. When we feel unsecure or insecure about the future, we can take confidence that our future is built on a solid foundation. There is sinking sin all around us. And the rock, which is Jesus Christ, will stand through every storm. I tell you, I, when I go to a funeral, I can tell at a funeral who are Christians, who believe in the Lord, and those who don't. As a pastor, I've done hundreds of funerals. I've seen some funerals where it was an open casket and people a couple times literally jumped into the casket. And they would wail and they would holler and they would do all kinds of crazy things. You know why? Because that's it. That's all they have and that is the end. And you know for us, it's only the beginning. True life begins at that point to where we're in the presence of the Lord. Listen, we're in the land of the dying, going to the land of the living. <laughs> we thank God we have the hope of heaven. Look with me here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 through 17, and it says this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching and uh, admonishing one another <laughs> with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say with me, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So you and I, listen, we should be overflowing with gratefulness. Keep having a thankful attitude. Taking stock of why you're thankful. Making God the source of your thankfulness. You'll avoid of having a complaining attitude when you're grateful. Thanksgiving is not something we celebrate once a year, but listen, we need to make that spirit of gratefulness happen, listen, every single day. I'm going to invite Pastor Ken to come and close the service this morning, and I want to challenge you. How many of you are blessed out there? Remember where your blessings are coming from, amen? And be careful to thank the Lord each and every day that the Lord will continue to bless you and to enrich your life daily. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, are you full of thankfulness? Yes. Amen.
Because you know, as believers, that is exactly where we should be. To think about that apart from Christ, we would not have a chance to step into eternity. Not even a hope. And to think that he was willing to come down and to lay down his life for us should consume us and fill us with incredible gratitude and thankfulness this morning. And you know what? As we roll into Thanksgiving and you're sitting at the table with your family, I want to challenge you to just stop for a moment and, and, and go beyond just giving the normal prayer before you eat, but just take a moment and thank uh, the Lord for salvation, for eternity, for the incredible blessings that he gives us each and every day. Because, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but God is involved in every area of your life, every day of your life. And we don't even notice it sometimes. We should be full of thankfulness. Uh, we should be the happiest people on the planet. Amen? Let's bow our heads.